gentlemen and immortals picking up the first win of the day here against cloud nine uh what a crazy game though yeah I, I mean that one was very close back and forth we saw it multiple times the lead kind of shifting and changing cloud nine having control of the dragons but immortals still keeping that gold lead throughout the game uh and on top of all that, before we got into the game, we saw a number of champion select, uh, you know, intricacies that we hadn't seen prior in the Olaf making a reappearance for Rainover, as that's one of his uh, favorite champions as well. The Ash coming in for Engage, and then the likes of the Grogus top lane uh, against the Echo. So first, what do you what do you make of the champion select that we saw come out of Cloud9 and Immortals here? Um, I think for Immortals, it was kind of it seemed more standard for them because the Rainover thing where he picks Olaf. It's one of the strongest early game junglers, and you just turn it into a tank and run past everything, run past the Bartle. I, I think you can run past the Zero too if you get it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a it was a little interesting. I think like the Rexai Gragas right away. It's like not much of a surprise factor. You figured out where like normally you might be able to like flex some of those. I understand first picking the Rexai, keep it off of Rainover, which is also one of his best champs, but. Right. I think it might have been the case where C9 was playing a little bit around C9 or uh, Immortals too much as opposed to their own game. All right, well, and then, of course, as we saw the game kind of play out, we saw a pretty early double TP into the bot lane by Immortals, picking up a 4 for 0 plus the turret. And we had some questions around the TP picked up on LeBlanc, and here it pays dividends as opposed to an Ignite in the mid lane. Yeah, I think this is one of those situations where you see, you know, Pobelter not performing that well in mid lane during the laning phase, but as soon as it's over, he's able to make a huge play in this bot lane. They pick everyone up, and they're able to take this turret. And he actually played the fight really well by splitting his target while his team cleaned up one kill. He made sure the next couple were secured as well. Yeah, so yeah. plenty of gold inflex here. Zach Dyrus, you got something um, The bottom up? line here was that um, the synergy of both the TPs were so well, you just don't expect it. So all of a sudden, whoa, five people bought. Jensen's still middle, like pushing the wave and walking down. It's like by the time he gets down there, the fight is already over. So I was like, oh man, I wasn't prepared for this, you know? Right, yeah. Azir not being able to keep up with that move there with the double TP, but a huge influx of gold there for Mortals. That was what was kind of keeping them in it against the likes of four dra dragons picked up for Cloud9 throughout the series. Infernal to start things off, followed it up with two Cloud Drakes. A lot of us were, you know, we're sitting here saying this seems pretty. Uh, they are sitting pretty, you know, as they move through. Of course, now we're going to uh, welcome our Echo Fox and P1 viewers as they come in. We're talking right to the middle of the wave. Like, hello. Oh, hello, guys. Uh, as we're talking about Immortals' first victory over Cloud9 on, on the uh, initial victory of the day, uh, continuing to work through it, you know, Cloud9 with those four dragons, as well as very quickly into the series, pretty well, looked like might be a game breaking moment. Jensen picking up a quadra kill. 23 minutes into the game, that's when you say all the gold just went on to the right person if I'm Cloud9. Yeah, I think this is one of the defining moments in the game. It was a very early Baron call. They had really only killed the Caitlyn, and they're, they don't, they're not that tanky. And C9 is able to collapse on this Baron attempt, and Jensen plays this fight just immaculately. Everyone else is always the focus until right about now, and he's still able to clean up all the kills, push LeBlanc off him. He just played this fight super well. And when all the gold goes on to Azir, one of your main damage carries after Sneaky, it's just really, really good as long as you don't get caught and as long as you don't get screwed over by the tank line. But right. He got caught. But he got caught. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's no, it's a good, I mean, it's, it's, it's a valid point to bring up, right? Which is because, again, you would look at that and you'd say, if, if Cloud9 at this point plays it out properly, they should pretty much walk away with this game. They've got the gold on the right person in that Azir. Caitlyn is still powering up, sure. But if I can, if we can get our tank line and Gragas and Rek'Sai out in front of them, we should be able to kind of push through and take the objectives one by one. Immortals, though, finding their windows of opportunity to get those Ash ults out and kind of capitalize on small picks here and there and snowball the game to victory from that. That, that was pretty much the story of the game after the double TPs. After they finished pushing bottom, C9 was already posi in position in the enemy jungle where Turtle got caught, and then they kind of took turns where Sneaky got caught, Turtle got caught. Like, the tanks and the people who are catching are, like, not giving up any space, and it's just back and forth, back and forth, and if you skip steps, you're going to get caught. One of the things that Dyrus and I were talking about was the Echo build. We, you know, when he went uh, AP, and so, like, our thoughts were that, like, if he just went tank, those team fights would have been a lot easier because half the time it was rain over, like, solo diving, and if... He just had one buddy he could have got a kill or two. Right. But then it, it just still doesn't matter because Huni comes in at the end of the fight and cleans a couple people up. So it was this kind of like weird 
you know, I think we both preferred Tank for the team comp, but he played it well and, you know, got a lot of kills for his team. Yeah, that brings us to about that 40-minute mark in the game where Immortals picks up an ace plus the base to close it out. So as we watch it play out here on the screen, we will see kind of the overwhelming amount of damage that comes out of the Immortals team comp, given the fact that they do have that full AP echo. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. You just see the Olaf go flying in to finish off the Gragas there, and he's still just going in nonstop. And this is a, a time where once the front line is down and on the retreat, there's really not much you can do to stop that Olaf. He's just going to be a freight train running right at the rest of the team. And, right. one, oh, and one of the benefits of AP Echo right here, you just see Sneaky get one shot from 80% HP. It's pretty crazy for late game. Yeah, it, it was one of those moments where you, you're looking at Jensen Sneaky and just saying, ah, oh, man, I feel so bad. They didn't even have a single moment to kind of turn and unleash the damage potential that they have, you know, from their two champions. But well played by Immortals picking that up. That is going to, of course, take us to our player of the game. That's going to be awarded to Wild Turtle in this series. You know, again, Wild Turtle, I and mean, we've spoken to, about him throughout the previous split, really stepping up within this Immortals roster, operating smoothly behind those frontliners that he has and putting out consistent damage for his team throughout the split yeah i think uh, a lot of those fights all started with you know pretty critical ash arrows he wasn't like you know airballing too many of them so uh the team fights would have gone a lot worse if he just kept missing them and they had to try and pick it up from there and then so that'll conclude uh, our coverage here of the immortals and c9 first game